was nursing my interest? No, not not at all. And I asked God, why? Why me? I really deserve this chance. You know, I've always wanted to do medicine. Why? I laid in my bed and the voice I heard was, why not you? I said, I said there's some good in the worst of people. Yeah. And so I sort of stay with that principle when it comes to relating with people. That it doesn't matter how everybody else thinks about the person, there's something special about them. Yeah. There's the reason other people are still in contact with them. So I want to get to know people from that from, angle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I try to relate to people regardless of how other people think about them. Because I don't like to judge people based on other people's experience. I want to have the experience myself. I meet you. If I realize, no, this is not someone who's going to help me, then fine. Hello guys, welcome to yet another exciting episode of your favorite podcast in the whole wide world. It's been a long time. We know we've been out for a very short break, but now we are back and we are back with a bank. Mm-hmm. We have a very big man here and we'll allow him to introduce himself. Okay. Francis and Fifi, I'm Kwejo Edusipoku and I'm affectionately called Ohineba. Yeah. Probably you've seen Ohineba Inspire somewhere. Yeah. So there's a face behind Ohineba Inspire. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> big man. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to tell us? Um, I'm a UK registered nurse. Um, I've been here for almost three years. So basically, that's it. Yeah. Great. Unless there's something more. <laughs> <laughs> there's more. Okay. There's more. So I've I've known this man. I've got a history with this man. So coming to the UK, personally, he played a very big role. Like he's well connected, guys. Hey, shit. Like if you want to get to even uh, who is the american president biden joe biden this guy can <laughs> this guy can link you to him. he has connections to, Aye, he has connections even to the, the king even I to think, the king i think that i should be living in the u.s <laughs> even to the king like he's he's well connected yeah cool so um personally i i think you are someone who is very focused and where whatever space you get into you try to make the best out of it yeah but I believe that people's upbringing or their childhood have has a lot to play in what they become in the future. So, is there anything that remarkable from your childhood that you think played a part in you becoming who you are now? Okay, so if there's something I would want to relate that to is the fact that growing up, I only always knew that um, I'll very I'll do very well in an area where I have to use my brains. I never relied on my strength because I knew that. I don't have the muscles to <laughs> do any job that required muscles. Uh-huh. So at a very young age, I think I was in primary school and I told myself that I think my best gift is to use my head. Mm-hmm. And so if anything, I would, I would take advantage of the, the fact that I can do well in class, excel in academic and do stuff and then use that because I always ask myself, if school doesn't work, what will work for me? Yeah. And I couldn't really pinpoint out anything. So I didn't have a reason not to like school. Mm-hmm. So actually, that was that was me. I was a child that was always asking questions <laughs> and always troubling people. I remember um, when I was in primary, before I went to GHS, I, they had to change my afternoon classes teachers like three times because I think the first person that um, got assigned to me, one time I went to my mom, I was like, this teacher is not so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she sort of is... She's teaching me like lower than I'm expecting and all of that. So they had to t- change her. And I think the very last, when I was in primary five or I think in GHS, I got another um, teacher. He was in sec, I think he was teaching secondary school or something, but he was the one teaching me at home. And then sometimes I'll go to him, his house. I used to um, go for the classes in his house. I'll go to his house, come back home. Sometimes he's not even there, but he will assign me to do some things. Mm. But then I told myself, nah these things some of these things uh, so at some point i stopped going for the classes mm. and i started teaching people in my hood mm. like uh, i started like I started a home school wow. so even though i was i thought when i was around primary six so even though i was in primary six i was in a home school i was teaching people in primary five primary four primary three wow. i would set exam questions and mark them i had a, wow. a template of a report card you know go back and give to your parents so i knew the only thing that was going to work me for me was anything that had to do with the school. So I didn't have a reason not to like a subject. Mm. 
So I it affected me in a way because the only time I went to senior high school and then there was a teacher who was frustrating me. I didn't like him. I used to do very well when I was in first year for that particular course I, um, subject. I remember biology. But by third year, before I got to fourth year, there was, they changed my teacher. And because I didn't like that man, it messed me up. So I always know that if I have to do it, so like people say, oh, I don't like mathematics, I don't like English. No, that's not me. As long as I need that to go to the next level, I have to like it. Yeah. So that was that was what was working for me. I didn't have a reason to say I don't like this. Mm. As long as I needed to go to the next stage, I would like it. So you were more academic. Yes. Yeah. If so not, you didn't yeah. have any special talent like myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't sing. I have a very horrible voice. I can't sing. I can't dance. I actually just I was actually actually a very shy young child. Like I wasn't I wasn't out there. I was introverted. People didn't understand. Because I was always reading. I was always finding, I was, my mom would say, he reads everything, even the, 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 the graphics. Yes. I read everything. It, once it, there's, it, there's something written on it, I'm reading it. Mm. Yes. And, and so that was me. So why the decision to go into nursing then? Because from the way you were well articulated and all that, we probably think maybe going to a lawyer or probably yeah. a lecturer. He, 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 and, and, and the, of, he, <laughs> I'll, I'll come, I'll come there. Because he's very interested, he's, because I've known him to be that, that kind of person who is into like back into student politics yeah. and those things. Yeah. So yeah. I I knew that if there's someone going to do, let's say, forensic nurse and those yeah. kind of things, yeah. he'll, he'll be that guy. So, okay. So what what what, what, what nursing? You into nursing? Yeah. Was nursing my interest? No, not not at all. And we'll come to it. So growing up, I even though I loved education. I think I didn't even know where I wanted to be. Mm. So I used to keep a diary and I used to write some of the things I wanted to become in the future. And if, if I show that diary today, you see that the things I wanted to be are not related in any, any way. There was um, um, a, a public speaker there. There was a, a, a cardiologist in there. There was um, something about law in there. So I knew I was going to, if I had an interest in literally a, a bit of everything, mm. And I wanted to write and all of that. So what I, what did I do? I decided to harness any all of these skills one way or the other. So, like I mentioned, I had an interest in medicine, in cardiology, because mm-hmm. I knew one of my readings I discovered um, Professor from Pom yeah. and I loved what he did with, with in medicine and cardiology. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I want to be like this man. And then I went to watch um, Gifted Hands. And yeah. I wanted to be like Ben Carson. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew my path was not re- really well, like cats. I knew I was going to do medicine. Mm. And the only reason was because I think when I got in there, if I go in there, I was going to do well. Mm. So my secondary school results came in. I did pretty well. Even when I did my North Deck, it was good. But so that year was very competitive for medical school. So I didn't get to medical school. And anybody would say, so why didn't you have to wait for another year? My parents were even surprised if I was going to go to Jenny that year because they thought, no, he wants to be a doctor. So, so I stayed home. I think when the results came, I stayed in my room for like either two days or three days where I really didn't, the only place I, I went was probably outside my room. I didn't go outside the house. And I, I think that was the very first time that I had cried. No, I think that was the second time. The first time I cried. I was supposed to be second in class four or something and I was made third. I cried <laughs> home that somebody had taken my position. <laughs> so this very one after second year school, I cried and I asked God, why? Why me? I really deserve this chance. Mm. You know, I've always wanted to do medicine. Why? Mm. I laid in my bed and the voice I heard was, why not you? Wow. Why not you? And I guess the car around was nobody. <laughs> And they kept telling me, why not you? If it doesn't happen to you, who believes that I can change things and turn things around? Who do you think can handle it? Mm-hmm. So I got off my bed, wiped my eyes, my tears, and then went to my mom and told her, I'm going to, what, um, that and the admissions had come, I got nursing. I told her, I'm going to do nursing. So my, my parents were shocked. They thought I was probably just playing around. So I think they called one of my uncles to talk to, ask me, if I could stay with that year and go to med- uh, medical school the next year. I said, no. I know why I'm saying I'm going to nursing school. At the time when I told them, I know why. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't even know why. 
<laughs> but I just knew it was not for nothing that I I didn't get to the medical school. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'll go and do this nursing and let's see where it takes me from there. So my uncle, some of them were considering a fee paying option for medical school. I told them, if I do fee paying, I will not feel right about myself. I don't know why. For me, I felt like my results deserve to take me to medical school. Mm-hmm. If I do go in there with a fee paying, I will always feel like I didn't belong there. Yeah. So, yeah. so I wouldn't do a fee paying option. I'd rather go to nursing school. What whatever it takes me, I'll do I'll be willing to do it. Mm. So I got to nursing school. And at the time I went to KNOST in first year. Um I think that time there was just one I think it was just one professor of nursing or one PhD of nursing in Ghana at the time. I think it was she was the head of the department of Lagos, something like that. Either the one doctor or just one PM professor. No, I think it was just one doctor, yeah. Mm. The rest were probably doing their PhDs at the time. So I sat so when I found out about that, I think my head of the department was still doing a PhD was in her PhD. I was like, I think this is why I have to be here. There are a lot of opportunities. There are a lot of people that have done an excellent job in medicine. If I go into medicine, what possibly could I make? What difference yeah. could I probably make it out yeah. then? Yeah. But I could stay here and do something. Mm. Yeah. So that was what that when I got that conviction in my heart, nothing changed my mind. Nothing. I mean nothing. Because as at second year, some of my friends left back to medical school. Third year, they left. Even final year, some of them left. Got to a point that even when they were discussing medical school and I, I walked into the room, they stopped talking about it. Because um, some of them used to say, oh, we, we got into a very stupid program and all of that. And one of the things I would tell them to their faces, it's actually very stupid of you to stay in a stupid program and just complain and do nothing about it. Yes, if you think it's very stupid, you don't want it. Why stay here? Leave. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great. So I had a strong conviction, and that was what changed my path. And that's why I'm here. So um, I've watched a video of you with Nanao. Yeah. Where and from there I learned you schooled with her. Yeah. And then you were also a deputy matron at Snabita. Oh my God. In Tema. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yes. Cool. And since that time since you've been in the uk yeah it's it's been one of your priorities to get people from ghana from other african countries whatever but it is just yeah. supports yeah. like into the uk yeah. to support yeah. them recommend them and all that why why okay so i think that really comes from my personal slogan especially with what i do with talking about inspires so in my inspires actually started like um expect um um a motivation for myself was supposed to be out there it was supposed to be a daily rem- reminder on my whatsapp that time um whatsapp so dp and status yeah. to remind myself of what i want to achieve so i was just going to inspire myself daily and i realized a lot of people were reacting to it and so i did a broadcast where i shared with people mm. so the reason i've done it for almost how many years it was 2013 so like 11 years now Wow. It's because I wanted to remind, and it's daily. I can count the number of days I've missed in the, these 13, these 11 years. Yes. And it was because I wanted to remind myself every day while I'm, the, I'm on this journey. Mm. So I wake up every morning, plan on him by Inspires and share with other people. So in one of these um, inspirational, daily inspirational quotes, I discovered something that there's a lot of space at the top for everyone. And where did that get that inspiration from? The fact that the sky is very big, but it doesn't matter the number of beds in there. It, there's never overcrowding out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of space up there for everyone. Yeah. All we need is to be somebody up there, hold their hand and grab it up. Mm. It's easier to pull when you are committed to it. Because if you are down there, you are pushing, it takes a lot of strength. So mm-hmm. somebody needs to get up there and pull people along because there's a lot of space and the other reason is if you're alone up there it gets lonely yeah, yeah certainly that, does so i didn't want to get there get to the top and the other people around you who can't relate with you anymore because they can't understand what you're talking about yes and the circle is better when everybody's winning absolutely yeah and i think that that is something we do in our circle as well so we've got a circle of about six seven friends and we're all constantly trying to push you know each other to 
become a better version of themselves. And, and sometimes yeah. when everybody's winning, you realize that you don't have to be worried about the very few things. Great, 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 great. That's good, good stuff. So yeah. my personal experience with him, right, was through a friend. Yeah. So I, I had um, Hetty. Hetty. Yeah. She's in the US now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought it was um, Emmanuel Chumesi. No, I think it's yeah, I, I, I spoke to Chumesi as well. So I asked Hetty that um, I needed some help getting a job in, yeah. in the UK. And she said, I know two people, that's Chumisi and yourself. <laughs> so she told me, uh, this this it person was is... not even very close to me at the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she sent me the number and she had saved it. Bra Kujo, deputy matron. Sure. And I said, wow. Okay. So Major I was Major. expecting, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something yeah. Yeah. like that. So I spoke to him and like he was saying just now, that when he has an encounter with you, he asks you if we are really um, yeah. committed and you yeah. really want mm-hmm. to do it. He asks me the same thing. Yeah. Are you serious about it? If you yeah. are serious, I don't want people who waste my time. Uh, yes, I'm not going to waste my time. And <laughs> I told him I'm, I'm very serious. So he sent me his supporting statements, statements mm-hmm. which I used. Like I just, uh, I'll say, just change a few, few things. things yeah. And I used to apply for my job. And then he, he helped me other things even my tb just yeah. you know when uh, you have your cos you have to do your tb, TB test yeah. and all that yeah he got me a fast track appointment like chat <laughs> <I can't laughs> <guys> connected seriously <laughs> so we kept in touch and um, he came to the uk a month before myself i arrived i got my job i was contemplating because where the job was was, was quite far. far but we discussed it and said yeah. if, if it's, it's cool coming. yeah just yeah. just come and he traveled all the way from the south to the north of England to visit me. It was just just amazing. We didn't manage to go to like, of so many places, places yeah. because it was a downtown. Yeah. But like I was so amazed that he had never seen me before. We mm-hmm. only spoke a few times and he visited me, not knowing whether I'm a ghost or <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a <laughs> kidnapper or something. I just asked him to bring some things for me, some, some very... It wasn't yeah. some big yeah. deal. Yeah. I could have asked him to post it. Yeah. But I just thought, I, this was me. I just spent one month in the UK. Mm-hmm. But I just thought, oh, when we when I came in, I, there was somebody who came to meet us, talk yeah. to us. Yeah. He's, just, he's there. And so, I sort of cut off and um, told him to go there, yeah. even though I knew it was far. So what was wrong with me just going up yeah. there to see him? Mm-hmm. Sort of make him feel like it's not too bad. Mm-hmm. Because I think initially he wanted to wait for another offer and all that yeah, because it was yeah. very fast. Like, yeah, but get in. You can always move. Yeah, yeah. Just get in. Yeah. Just get in and move. And I was actually happy that day when I came up, yeah. up north because I remember when I went to the um, train station and they told me how much it was going to cost me to go. I was like, huh? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> this much? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Seriously. But I, 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 I said, you. no, I have already made up my mind. Yeah. I'm going to see him. I went up there. And I took the it, was, it was around 200 pounds. Yeah. Like, I remember it was crazy. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. he made that for like, I'm, I'm, and I, had yeah. just, I just got my first pay. So I was like, it was, it was I'm going to do it. Super, super amazing. And then I took the chance to, um, so instead of coming the next day, mm. I spent like three days trying to travel around, see other people that live around the north, the mid east, um, Middle East and all of those places. And I, I, I took the chance to see other people. And personally, when I, meet or have those encounters with people as long as this person shows commitment i sort of establish a relationship and then we see how it goes from there i'm not that person that keeps in touch with people like every day yeah even if, if you ask me who is my best friend now the name i'll mention the last time i spoke to this person was probably like six or seven months ago and that's me i i barely have people that i constantly talk to yeah because i i i'm very reliant on connections so if you're talking for a long time it's probably because maybe at this minute um you live close by i see you at work every day that's where we get in touch but we probably don't talk every day probably talk yearly but that connection whatever we met or whatever brought us together is going to be there i don't know how to i don't cut off people easily and all Mm, of that except when you really go yeah. sorry to yeah. cut yourself so, that. so that's it. i don't even have time to block people no yeah you need to uh, enjoy what is going on in this life it, it brings me to this question um just because we are nearing the time uh, to wrap up this conversation but um this question what are the kind of people you want to surround yourself with and 
huh. the people you've surrounded yourself with till now have they shaped you in any way okay when it comes to people when i was growing up i used to be very very um selective to even people i just talked to i grew up in a in a place where there were a lot of young people but even till like age 15 I could count the number of people I had personally spoken to. Even my house, mm. I had um, um, family people were like my my dad's um, brother who had kids, and so like my cousins. But they were into my friends. We just yeah. hey hello, and I'll just pass. I was I'm not the person that would really engage you in a conversation, no. Mm. But I think after secondary school, when I was going to the university, and I started getting myself into student politics, I realized that I need to open up a little more. So I opened up and I started relating to everybody and anybody. Mm-hmm. Yes. We could, I could meet anyone and we establish a, a conversation. So I sort of know a bit of everybody, every kind of, every class of people, mm-hmm. in any group, anything you can think of. Mm-hmm. I have somebody in there that I have a sort of a relationship with. Because I noticed that, mm-hmm. you see, some, let's say somebody likes alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. I've never tasted alcohol. Somebody smokes. I'm not going to not have a relationship or connection with the person because they smoke. Mm. Um, there's something in there. Yeah. Okay. There's um, a senior colleague who told me that there's um, there are, there's some good in the worst of people. Yeah. And so I sort of stay with that principle when it comes to relating with people. That it doesn't matter how everybody else thinks about the person. Mm. There's something special about them. Yeah. There's the reason other people are still in contact with them. Yeah. So I want to get to know people f- f- in, from that from angle. That, yeah, 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 yeah. And then even when I was in school, most of the tutors that people didn't like, strangely, were the ones that so were close to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even in my workplace, the people that people think are very difficult, they're people that I relate well with. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I remember on the secondary school, most people didn't like our librarian. She was... But... I was like this with this woman yeah to, to the point where i could go to her office and tell her please i want to use your your chair can you give me some 30 minutes and she'll walk she'll go use an, another office and give me her seat just to learn if the library is full wow yeah great great, great i try great. to relate to people regardless of how other people think about them yeah because i don't like to judge people based on other people's experience no yeah. i want to have the experience myself i meet you if I realize, no, this is not someone who is going to help me, then fine. Mm. Apart from that, I like to know people for myself. Yeah. Anybody, I like to know you for myself. If whatever you are bringing to the table is not something I find be- beneficial. Mm. And the fact is, it doesn't matter how much alcohol you think you drink. If I take, you, I go out with you, you don't expect that because you like alcohol, I will take a, a, even a sip. No? Mm. Mm. If that is uncomfortable for you, that's the last meeting. Yeah. So, um, this whole recommendation referral thing that you've been doing has there been a point where you regret it because someone has been ungrateful or someone has disrespected you or even has come in and you know misconducted themselves or something like that okay um regrets probably but i don't really take things to heart because um when i started the whatsapp group initially i started for just about seven friends there were people i knew so the whole goal was to get all of them jobs into the UK. Mm. And I think in the first two weeks, everybody got a job. Wow. Then, yeah. Then other people started coming. They also started referring their, to their friends. So when I started, I used to keep track of everybody. Mm. Even the new people that joined that I didn't know them. I used to keep track. I was email, um, DM them. What's happening? Send me your... I was reviewing. And for everyone to get into the group, I will personally, even if... I grew up with you. I will check your CBT and um, your IELTS or AET to make sure you have passed. Mm. Doesn't matter if I knew if you have to pass. There's a, there should be a, there should be a proof. Yeah. So to join that group, the criteria was you must have everything ready. Mm. I was not going to now teach you IELTS. I was not now going to teach yeah, you CBT. No. I didn't have the time for that. So show me that interest first mm. that you have done this. Then we'll take it from there. Okay. Then I will pro- proofread your supporting statements, your applications, everything at no cost, at no charge. Mm. And all you need to know is just show proof that you are working, you yeah. are doing something. And I could personally go around, find emails of em- em- employee, employers sent to them, write email this person. Apart from the applications on track jobs, I was doing um, helping them shape emails, direct emails applications also. Mm. So I'll go through them and say that how it was going. 
and then at every stage i used to update the group so this person has um um applied got an offer got two offers name of the trust and all of that um if you you get your cos you celebrate you on the page and all of that we do all of that progress so that if you had let's say two offers and your cos come from one then i'll see how i could refer the next person for that particular offer yeah. so i'll let you email the first the other people to tell them that okay um, i have another friend who has done his ielts and cbt but um need some help then i will draft the email for you and we'll send it to them and those ones also so we're also working some people were accepting the recommendations or the mm. referrals from the other people that were not uh, had already were leaving them because yeah. they've got another COS. Yeah. So it kept going for a while. Then the numbers moved from seven to twenty to fifty to hundred, and I got to a point I couldn't keep up. Yeah. So the people coming in. And the interesting thing was some of the people coming in. I was meeting some at the airport. Wow. Yeah. It's really the first people <laughs> I used to meet some of them at the airport. That's a hell of and a job. Other, yeah. other, Seriously. Because, like I said, when I started, there were people I knew. Yeah. There were other people, let's say, they've got their visas and now they're, they're very excited. They want to come in mm. and their trust changed their date. I was like, you know what? Come in. I'll host you. So I also used to host others. Because at the time I was living alone, I was single. So I was, I was like, come, I'll host you for like a week or two until they are ready to take you and then you go. So I did that also. And then the other people who I couldn't host or meet at the airport, what I used to do, once you arrive, I would um, ask you for your address. And before you know it, they said delivery from Asta or something like groceries to keep you up for like two weeks or more. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So That's I used to do amazing. all of that. And um, it was, I don't know, was, I, that was just me. Yeah. Because when I got in, I came in with a, a friend that I, I did service with and his wife was here. The interesting thing was um, in 20... Um, I think 2018, when we started knowing about this thing, and I told my friends we wanted to do it. Then we all slacked, but he told his girlfriend, and his girlfriend took it up and came to the UK in 2018. But we all came later after three years. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 21. <laughs> so when we got in, she was already here, so she helped us with some groceries and mm. all. So I felt like if somebody did it for me, it yeah, why yeah, not? Why not someone. do it? So I used to do for other people. Any regrets? I don't really like talking about this, but I did have one. And it really got to me because this was somebody I knew, I worked with, and then I don't know. Um, it's 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 good. It's cool if it's, you don't want to. It's no, it's something. It, it, yeah, no, this is a, this is F and F. We yeah, want exclusive. It was it was <laughs> it was something that got to me, and one of those things that um, I used to tell people was throughout the process, the IELTS, CBT preparations. I think even when I was wanted to leave. Ghana, this person was interested in the UK process, but he didn't know anyone personally who had gone through it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, don't worry. If you don't think it's very reliable, it's people are actually doing it, you're just mm -hmm. hearing it, I'll go through it and I'll take you through. So I came to the UK and we started the process with this preparation, everything mm -hmm. was fine. And then, um, strangely, I think he got some offers and I wanted him to um, recommend other people for the second offer that he didn't get, but he didn't want to do it. Because he thought it was blocked. He wanted to get into the UK. So he'd want to avoid any chances being blocked. I was like, nothing is going to happen. You already have your COS. Yeah. 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 He got in. I was trying to even... I think that was... I was I was getting married around that period. So I think he had just... That week I was... No, I had got married. I was moving out of my, my... I had two weeks to actually move. Mm -hmm. Because initially I was hoping to stay at where I was. And I realized we had to... My other roommates were moving and... It was a very unplanned something. Yeah. So I had to find accommodation as soon as possible. So the people that were coming to the UK around that time didn't really get a lot of... Um, but I was still responding to him, um, messages That's and all of that. So this person came, to, like I think he said, he mentioned to me he was coming and he came. I sort of didn't know when and all of that. But I still was trying to see if I could help him move from the airport and all. Because I couldn't meet him up. Then strangely, I wasn't hearing from this person. And... Because I was like, okay, get to your place and call me. I wasn't hearing from this person. And I was like, ah. So I was like, a week, I was like, ah. This person's in the UK, right? And I tried to reach out and the comment was not a very good one. Like, After do, you know, do, do you know me now? And his reason was like, I treat other people. I don't know what his, what his expectation was. Because 
even if I was hosting people, I was meeting people at the airport, I was buying them things. It was my money. It was not anybody deciding that. Mm. So I don't know whether it was some sort of whatever it was. I don't know what it was, but um, the comment was not something that came out well with me. Mm. So I essentially let it go. Then I think there was another comment at that time and I tried to reach out and I was like, no, this is it. And I told myself, ah, it's worth it. Yeah. Mm. To the point where, apart from that incident, other people that had joined the group had also seen um, experienced people mm. who sort of made them feel like uh, they didn't really need their help. Even when, after they go here, like, oh, I didn't really ask for it. You decided to help me, sort of. So at wow. some point, I wanted to close the WhatsApp group. I was like, yeah, the people I wanted to help are here. Yeah. I don't owe anybody here anything. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to close it, but people were like, no. And I can really say for a fact that some of the other people who got a chance from that page or that WhatsApp group have been very, very helpful to me. Yeah. 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 It's not like they send me money or anything, but instances where I you think that you need numbers, you need people to show up. You yeah. see some of these people show up and I'm like, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, wow. That's, that's, that's and great. It's yeah. sort of, do, do you have a rough estimate, a number? If you could say on top of your head. Okay, so for the I've platform, done. we have like, currently have like three, 300 people or more. Talking of the number of people. So currently you're still yes, working to, working to people. people. Yeah. And how many people have you brought in by any chance? Okay, so where there's people that I've assisted with the applications, that one, I don't know. I didn't back kept the numbers. But with a direct application for my trust. So what I did was I emailed mine. So when it, I think I did my... I think after my first interview with Nanel, or there was one interview I did, and I realized that pe- we could do recommendations because I think when people went to wait for Nanel's interview, they were like, oh, you talk about recommendations. What can we do about it? And all of that. I was like, what can I do? At the time, people were not getting jobs. And my trust was still recruiting because I had just got a band six role to join the OSCE team. So the OSCE team is those that have helped international as pass the exam. Yeah. And I knew they were recruiting. But I realized there were no Ghanaians coming up. Mm-hmm. Like most of the people were other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. they, when I joined my my Oski team in July, there were some Ghanaians that had joined. Mm-hmm. So I asked them, how did you get in? They were like, oh, they saw the email, they tried and it worked and all of that. So other people have given the email to other people. It's not working. So it took me like two or three months to think about it. Because I was, I was kind of contemplating whether I was going to be conflict of interest with my role with the mm. team and then people i knew coming in i love that so i wasn't sure so when i made up my mind i was like no there's no harm in trying it's not like anybody's going to take my job from me because i made a request mm. i was like let me try so i emailed the recruitment manager telling them telling her i think she had sent me a, an email that was unrelated to recruitment mm. what's about um, um survey for international nurses so after I'd completed the survey, then I started to reply the email. Mm. So I replied the email to them about who I was, how I joined the trust, how I've progressed within the year and all of that. And then I added that if why well, I know people who have been trying to reach out to the recruitment team by email, but they're not getting any feedback. Is there a way I could recommend them? I said, oh, sure. So I'm sure in her head she was probably thinking, oh, he's bringing like two people, three people. And I sent my first list. I think it was about is that 13 or 18 people. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah i think it's i think it was 18 the first time yeah i sent them and then within so i made it a bit easier for them i think that was why they actually liked it so instead of sending it individually i put it all in one file mm. i asked all of them put your documents in one file mm. in one doc, like one pdf format so that once they pick it your name is there everything they need is there so i sent it together to the recruitment team and then within a day or two, they responded to all of them, gave them how to apply for the jobs online and all mm. of that. And most of them went in there. Even though the interview date was delayed, but I think out of the first people, out of the first 18, I think 13 people were successful, something like that. But and I, So after a month or two, when they had all got interview date and they had not even done the interview, I did a second batch of referrals and I sent 17. Wow. <laughs> So in all, how many people are here? 
So they're actually now coming in. Okay. Because the trust had actually informed them they were going to be bring them in 2024. Okay. Oh, so okay. I started this recommendation in November. Mm. Yeah. So the first interviews were in December and then the last ones were in March. Mm. March of this, March year. this year. Yeah. Wow. The last interviews were in March. Yeah. But the first people that came in came in March also. Mm. So I think there were two people that came in March and then three or four or five people came in April. There was no recruitment in May. And there's other people coming in July. Mm. Yeah. Great. Great. Wow. It's, yeah. It, it, so I think overall, stuff. we have a page for the people that I recommended. And I think other people have joined. But on the page, I think there are about 25 of them. Yeah. Out of 25. And I think so far, 10 or so have arrived. This And the rest are going to come in. They've assured them they're going to bring them in. Wow. Wow, yeah, great. guys! You know, in this era where getting a job yeah. is so hard, it's, man, it's we we have man. we have to we have to work I, something. I told you now. We have to work some things in the background yeah. to get you yeah. know. And yeah. the yeah. interesting thing is, I had people approach me asking me to sell these slots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people want to make money out of it. You know? Yeah, and they're like, if we want to go into that issue, why you, it will be why not? Why not taking advantage of it? Did I consider it at some point? Yes, I did. Because of the disappointment I had had before. Mm. But I asked myself, why am I going to risk it when I'm already in the trust? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I told yeah. myself, it's not worth Your it. How much, how much would you, could I possibly get from yeah. them? Yeah, you've built yeah. such a uh, brand for yeah. yourself. And then the thing was, now. there was me in November, December, recommending people. When I had actually tried to bring my siblings in, in October, between July to October, where I had paid over fourteen thousand mm. pounds, so I was paying. My, I had paid money to bring my own siblings in, and here I was doing it for free for other people. I told myself, "Yes, you never know how it comes back to you." That's yeah, the work of God. Yeah. You never know how it comes back to you, and that is how we we'll end today's episode. If this is the first time you're watching us, please, please, please subscribe, share, drop your comment in there, and we'll also leave some details of for Hineba in the description box your socials his yes socials. his socials oh. so that you can reach out people are coming to just blast my my dm yeah, this, i get this, this all the time this is fnf we are uh, <laughs> you know this is the place where they have to come yeah but it's just unfortunate it. that now <laughs> my trust is not recruiting anymore yeah. yeah yeah so that's it that's a the disadvantage but and then even my whatsapp page we've actually closed it mm. for new people because i felt like we are adding on new people and then most people are not getting their jobs already so we're like the number of people there, I took the last tally and then I think we had about some 50 or more who had not got jobs. We want to make sure those so people get jobs up. and then before we start looking yeah. out. Yeah. Great. All right. All right. Thanks so much for staying.